I can't hire people fast enough to cover all the demand we have for different institutions that want to get involved. Are we likely to see a Bitcoin ETF this year? Which means then at that time, you could even see governments and treasury departments start buying Bitcoin, which may sound far-fetched, but two years ago, corporations buying Bitcoin for the balance sheet was crazy too. So your call for potentially 100,000 by the end of 2021, that makes you know a 50% rally in December look like peanuts, right? Bitcoin is maturing right before our eyes, breaking through 36,000 just last night. The conversation in the mainstream around crypto assets is maturing as well. Federal regulators have taken a favorable position on stablecoin and crypto asset integration into the banking sector. The two biggest hurdles to a Bitcoin ETF are finally being overcome, and broad audiences are waking up to the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to participate in the greatest transfer of wealth in a century. We're only three days into the trading year, yet institutions are pushing and shoving their way to the front of the line and retail is just getting started. Keep that in mind as we hear from various CEOs and executives giving their take on what's happening, but more importantly, on what's yet to come. Are we likely to see a Bitcoin ETF this year? We've, we've kind of cleared some of the key hurdles that were, uh, that were mentioned by, by the regulators, which one was a, a, um, a regulated custodian. So we now have a handful of custody uh, providers who have SOC 1 and SOC 2 mm -hmm. type audits from big four accounting firms. The second bigger piece was actually market manipulation concerns. And now that the market has continued to transition from more crypto native levered exchanges to more spot exchanges, th this move particularly has been dominated by Western oriented, institutional oriented exchanges where you know, spot, mi spot markets provide a lot better price discovery than, than what we had seen previously in this mm -hmm. market. So I think all, so, all signs point to um, certainly in the right direction. We're definitely in a significantly better position to see one in, 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 in the, the near term. The story of the first couple of years was that here was a store of value that was apolitical and could be a diversifier. And then you fast forward, so you see the adoption in the form of Bloomberg Galaxy Index. Then you go to Fidelity being a custodian. Now you're a PayPal letting you buy and sell with it. So adoption's going up price is going up um, and the lack of available alternatives in the market in terms of being diversifiers, right? Bonds have largely gone out the window in terms of the relative risk return. So I think all three of those, and once you see the credentialing mechanisms of large pension funds and sovereign entities, and by the way, unlike a retail investor, the assumption there is that these aren't speculators. These are long-term buy and holds that can create some sort of substantive floor for the currency. We also see a lot of our older uh, skewed investors who want to be involved there. It's not, I think there's this uh, sort of narrative out there that it's only young people who care about this. We've actually seen a, a very nice mix in terms of the ages that are attracted to the products that are related to Bitcoin. And I think that that's very important. So there is already at least one prediction of Bitcoin soaring to 50,000 this year. At least one, and there are people that think it could go much higher than that. Now, Bitcoin is entering the new year in full bull mode, briefly exceeding that 34,000 milestone as the recent eye-popping rally continues. Now, as we look at the Bloomberg, you can see Bitcoin now, the white line on the right, showing the rise since 2018, has literally blown away the prior rallies from 2015 to 2017. And the latest jump comes on the heels of Bitcoin's huge jump in December, where it surpassed the $20,000 milestone and registered a jump of about 50 percent in that month alone, what many were calling a Santa rally. Now, that's leading Anthony Trenchev, who is the co-founder of Nexo in London, it's a company that builds itself as the biggest Bitcoin lender. He's the one predicting that Bitcoin could well be on the road to 50000 this year, probably, and this is his prediction, in the first quarter of 2021. You were a foreign exchange trader. You are working on Wall Street. What drew you to this cryptocurrency world? Which when I realized that there was a universal currency that everyone could accept, follow, trade, and be a part of, that really captured my attention, be it retail traders, be it institutional traders, be it now even treasuries that we're seeing want, want access to these digital assets. We saw a three times increase of our easiest way to buy Bitcoin over the last seven days. That's, a, that's an insane amount of new users coming into our platforms, coming in through our mobile devices or our mobile apps. 
to be able to trade Bitcoin through Binance US. So it's really remarkable to see this but both led by the institutions approving it, validating these uh, these cases, as well as seeing the retail support come in, uh, eager to get a part of this digital future. So your call for potentially 100,000 by the end of 2021, that makes you know a 50% rally in December look like peanuts. I grew up a foreign exchange trader at Morgan Stanley, so I know that a crystal ball is a crystal ball. Um, <laughs> if I was good at calling price predictions, I probably wouldn't be working as hard as I am. So Does that mean you're walking back from that 75,000 to 100,000 call that you Not a chance, a not a ago? chance. I'm bullish. Let's go 100. Does it mean that... In a sense, Bitcoin has arrived because I think you're of the volition that, it, that 2020 was a year of a regulatory evolution. I'm just reading what you've said. And uh, 2021 will be the year of institutionalization. That's very much the case. And obviously, you know, the recent rally has, has captured a lot of headlines given uh, the pace of, uh, of change. But uh, in our view, this has been building for some time. And as you, as you mentioned there, um, you know, 2020 was a year of significant progress on two of the key factors really required by institutions to uh, allocate capital to the space. And that was first and foremost, regulation, and, and secondly, secure custody and safekeeping. And now that those two problems are solved, uh, this rally is very much being uh, led by the institutional capital allocation to the space, which is very different to the, what, what we saw in late 2017. And how do you assess, how do you analyze Bitcoin's fundamentals? Sure, good question. On, on, look, on the volatility, we, we definitely expect over time volatility to subside, uh, given the regulatory progress that has been made and the increased surveillance of the participants in the market uh, that will be required. Um, in addition, as more and more institutional activity uh, continues to come to the space, I think we'll see uh, less of those wild swings that uh, you know many have become uh, used to over the last few years. You talked about how 2021 will be a year for Bitcoin to get institutionalized. How about 2021 being the year when Robinhood investors get into the act? I mean, uh, do you see that happening this year? Uh, that's a good question. Whilst whilst this rally uh, has definitely been much more institutionally led, we are seeing signs of, uh, of of retail interest and activity starting to follow on now. You know, if you if you Google, uh, if you look at the, uh, the the number of times Bitcoin is being Googled again, it's uh, those levels are five times what they were just a few months ago. Um, so the, the rally uh, has, has definitely garnering the attention of not only institutions but uh, but the more uh, retail uh, end of the market as well. What is the biggest hurdle that you uh, foresee for your views to uh, be kind of derailed? Uh, probably the last remaining piece is regulators globally collaborating cross-border. Um, and that is starting to happen now. We have uh, industry bodies who are working on, uh, on collaborating across borders. Uh, but that's probably the, probably the one uh, thing that uh, we'll see play out a bit more in 2021. So hang on. Are you saying you think it can go to 45 in the next month? Yeah, so I, listen, on last month on this show, I said it would hit 30,000 in the next three months, and I was proven wrong very fast. It hit 30,000 in 20 days. So I think now there's very little sell-side pressure, to be honest with you, and I think it goes up to 40, 45, you know, the next month or so pretty easily, I think. And then when you get to 40, 45, you'll start seeing some selling pressure. But I think when it gets that high now, you're going to start seeing something else come into play, which is that Bitcoin, and I'm going to predict this in this year, will become a trillion dollar currency, which means then at that time, you could even see governments and treasury departments start buying Bitcoin, which may sound far-fetched, but two years ago, corporations buying Bitcoin for the balance sheet was crazy too. How much does the Coinbase IPO, they've, they've filed to go public, how much do you think a successful IPO of Coinbase could change the game and go towards legitima legitimizing uh, cryptocurrency in general? Well, and that, I think it's going to help a lot. And that's why I predict that Bitcoin, I thought, would be 30000 because of the Coinbase IPO, but we've already passed that. So I think it's going to hit forty five, and then maybe go to a trillion-dollar market cap because of that. The Coinbase market cap is, is very, going to be very instrumental for a lot of reasons. I mean, Square, Wall Street loved that Square traded $1.6 billion, $1 billion worth of crypto in Q3 last year. Coinbase traded $1.5 billion two days ago on a Saturday. They've been trading over a billion dollars just of Bitcoin alone every day for the last two weeks, right? And they charge between 0.5 and 2%. So unlike Robinhood that sells Tesla stock maybe for free for the buyers, they're charging 0.5 and 2%.
the revenue numbers that Coinbase is going to have, I think are going to blow people's minds away. And then Wall Street is going to really drive that stock price up. And then what is all the other trading exchanges like Charles Schwab, E-Trade, all are they going to do and sit back and let Coinbase have its whole market? It's going to put a lot of media frenzy around this whole industry. And seeing when people start showing that much revenue and growth, everyone's going to start offering these type of services pretty soon. Listen, we, we took out 20,000, which was a big deal only two, three weeks ago, uh, which created this sense of inevitability in the market. Uh, institutions are pouring in. Um, I can't hire people fast enough to cover all the demand we have for different institutions that want to get involved. And there's very little supply. So you have this amazing supply, demand supply imbalance. What's interesting around this is no one's saying this about Bitcoin. There's no choke point. You know, when China tried to shut down Bitcoin, basically in various ways, shut down mining and trading, it migrated to Japan, South Korea, Vietnam. They became centers. There's no way the governments can stop it. This is not financial advice, but I'll continue to provide you with key updates and crypto news, so be sure to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a thing. There's power in numbers, and even more power in knowledge. So share this content with those close to you so we don't leave anyone behind. This is Rex, signing out.